I hear Mrs. Kim playing, O come, O come, Emmanuel. This is already the second Sunday in Advent. You see that there are two candles lit on the Advent wreath. The prophet's candle was the first one, and today we lit the Bethlehem candle. Next Sunday or next week, it should be the shepherd's candle, the pink colored one. There is a flyer on the table in the back about a living nativity that is being sponsored and put on by Sherman Oaks Lutheran. And that will take place next Sunday. This morning, in our worship, we think about the forerunner, the one who was designated by God to go ahead of the Messiah to prepare his way. And that forerunner was John the Baptizer. May the Lord be with you. And also with you. And we join in singing the opening hymn, On Jordan's Bank the Baptist Cry. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But, but if, if we, we confess, confess our sins, sins God, God, who is, is faithful and just, will, will forgive, forgive our, our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. unrighteousness. So let us then confess our sins to our Heavenly Father and hear his words of forgiveness. Most, Most merciful God, God we, we confess, confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We, we have, have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sin. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We speak responsively from Psalm 66. Shout for joy to God, all the earth, Sing, Sing the, the glory, glory of his, his name. name. Give, Give to, to him, him glorious praise. praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So, so great is your, your power that, that your, your enemies, enemies come, come cringing to you. to you. All the earth worships you and sings praise to you. They, they sing, sing praises, praises to your, your name. name. Come and see what God has done. He, he is awesome, awesome in his deeds toward the children, children of man. He turned the sea into dry land. They, they passed, passed through, through the river on foot. There, there did we rejoice, rejoice in him, who rules by his might forever, whose eyes keep watch on the nations. Let, Let not, not the rebellious, rebellious exalt, exalt themselves. themselves. Bless our God, O peoples. Let, Let the, the sound, sound of his, of his praise, praise be heard. heard. Please be seated and let the songs of his praise be heard. process of repentance, our haughtiness is removed and our mountains of pride are brought low, but the Lord humbles us in order to exalt us in his mercy. As the Lord has begun this good work of repentance in us, so also does he perfect it 
by his word and Holy Spirit, and he will bring it to completion in the day of Jesus Christ. He purifies us to be his priestly people, precious in his sight and abounding in faith and love, so that we offer our very lives in righteousness to the Lord. Our first reading for this morning is from the prophet Malachi, chapter 3, verses 1 through 7b. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, and the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, and they will bring offerings in righteousness to the Lord. Then the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing in the Lord, as in the days of old and in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be swift a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired worker in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, against those who thrust aside the sojourner and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed, for the days of your father have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. This is the word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. Our second reading is from the epistle reading of Paul to the Philippians, chapter 1, verses 2 through 11. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you are all making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all, because I hold you in my heart, for you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense of the co and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent, and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Christ, Jesus Christ to the glory and the praise of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now lift up our voices and sing, I hear a sound.
He who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it, even as he completed some of his work through John the baptizer, the preaching and baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Prepare us for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The historic work of John the baptizer was completed with the first advent of our Lord Jesus in the flesh. But the ministry of the forerunner continues in the preaching of law and gospel and in holy baptism. Through his messengers, the Lord calls people of all nations to see the salvation of God. In order to honor the Lord Jesus and his gospel, if you are able, would you please stand? The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke in the third third chapter, beginning at the first verse. Glory Glory to to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Notice how precise St. Luke is in reporting this event. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, being tetrarch of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Lysanias being the tetrarch of Abilene. During the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. And he went into all the region around the Jordan River, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall become straight and the rough places shall become level ways, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. John said, therefore, to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits that are in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked John, Well, what then shall we do? And he answered them, whoever has two tunics is to share with him who has none. And whoever has food is to do likewise. Tax collectors also came to be baptized and said to him, teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, collect no more than you are authorized to collect. Soldiers also asked him, and we, what shall we do? And he said to them, do not extort money from anyone by threats or by false accusation, and be content with your wages. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. God knows what we believe, but let's tell each other. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. Be seated to sing. to come, the Lord Jesus Christ. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Could you be the one? John was the original. Even as he told the priests and the Levites who asked him, who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, 
as the prophet Isaiah said. You know, Jan, John the Baptizer was born when Zechariah and Elizabeth were already at an advanced age. And we do not know how long they lived, but the Bible tells us that John grew and became strong in spirit. And then, most likely after the death of his aged parents, John avoided the population centers, and the Bible tells us he was in the wilderness until the day of his public appearance to Israel. And while he was in the hilly wildernesses of Judea, at the prompting of God's Holy Spirit, as you heard in today's gospel, the voice of God came to John in the wilderness. And he came down from the hills and he then went into the wilderness areas along that Jordan River. And he became the voice of one crying out in that wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. That was then. How about now? How about now? How about the hilly and valley wildernesses of California and the United States and the world? Are people not once again harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd? Are people not anxious and troubled and doubtful about many things? As 2021 gropes its way toward 2022, we are surrounded by COVID and its variants, rising prices, growing inflation, nuclear expansion, in Iran and China and God knows where else. Smash and grab robberies. Follow home robberies. Just another one of them. Last night, the night before. Violent home invasions. More and more street crime in broad daylight. Increasing homicides across the nation. Isn't that enough wilderness for you? I told Judy, you know, with these uh, follow people home robberies, pretty soon more and more people are going to have to be carrying loaded guns so that they can go from their car to their house with that in their hand in case anybody wants to jump them. Oh, there's a surprise for you. See? Now the world needs voices that will cry out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Could you be the one? I have read this from online news reports and newspapers. I have heard it on uh, TV broadcast interviews and from those who were doing the asking. I have seen it on the faces of people as they've been mulling around in places like Waukesha, Wisconsin, and Oxford, Michigan, and some of the other places of crime scenes. And some of the things I have read and seen and heard go a little bit like this. You know, I don't, I don't know what to think anymore. This used to be a pretty safe neighborhood. Now I'm afraid to go out, and not just at night, or from another. What in the world is going on? The CDC says one thing, the president says something that sounds different, the NIH doesn't say much of anything at all, Dr. Fauci leaves me confused. I don't think there's anyone I can trust. And another. You know, politicians are all alike. 
They promise whatever they need just to get elected. But then when they get in there, they do the exact opposite of what they promised. You don't know who to believe. Now those are just some. There are many other concerns and complaints. However, all of those things, in my opinion, all of those things are the kind of stuff that the Lord Jesus came into our human flesh to deal with. Much as he himself claimed in his home church at Nazareth. Imagine Jesus coming into our Savior's first Lutheran today and we ask him, would you give a little bit of a message for us? Do you think he might give the same message that he gave at his home church? He looked around at his congregation there and he told them, the spirit of the Lord is on me. He has put his hand on me to preach the good news to people. He has sent me to heal those who have a sad heart. He has sent me to tell those who are being held down that they can go free. He has sent me to make the blind to see and to free those who are being held back because of trouble. He sent me to announce the time is here for people to receive favor from the Lord. When you hear somebody saying, I'm almost afraid to go out, could you be the one to say, I'm not? The Lord is my shepherd. And even though I might be walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. He gives me eternal life. Nothing can snatch me out of his hand. Or when you hear people saying something like, there isn't anyone I can trust. Could you be the one to say, oh, but there is. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Never depend on your own understanding. Give in to him in all of your ways. And he'll show you which path to take. Or when you hear someone say, I don't know who or what to believe. Could you be the one to say, I do? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. No matter how many promises God has made, all of them are yes in Christ Jesus. No one who believes in him will be disappointed. Could you be the one? I'm going to ask you to be patient now as I read from a recent article by Lee Strobel. Lee Strobel. For the first 20-some years of his life, he was quite a devout atheist, or he thought he was, and he was trying to be. But then at some point, he decided to investigate this Jesus fella, because Lee Strobel's wife, Leslie, she had started to go to a church and become Christianized. And he wanted to know what all that stuff was about. How serious is it? And so he began, he became the legal editor of the Chicago Tribune, the Chicago Trib. And he decided that he would use all of the same tools and all of the same resources and all of the same methods that he used to investigate other articles, and he would investigate the claims of Jesus. He's the best-selling author of 20-some books, including The Case for Christ, The Case for Easter, The Case for uh, Faith, The Case for Miracles, and many more. And he recently wrote, Tim and I became buddies after he moved into my neighborhood in the seventh grade. As fairly close friends for the next half dozen years, we spent long hours shooting baskets on the driveway, playing softball at the park, and talking constantly about girls, cars, and sports. Mostly girls. Oh, did I mention girls? 
except for my occasional rants against Christianity, which were fairly common back in my teenage days as a budding atheist, I don't think we ever discussed spiritual matters. Tim and his family didn't go to church, although he didn't seem as hostile to religious faith as I was. He was simply indifferent toward God. After high school, we left for different universities. Unlike today, with text messaging, email, cell phones, friends at that time often drifted apart when they went away to college, and that's what happened to Tim and me. Many years later, I heard through the grapevine that he was working for a large corporation, living in a distant city, and had gotten married, but subsequently went through a divorce. In the meantime, I had lost my faith in atheism and become a Christian. Then came the news that Tim and his new wife were moving to a city not far from where I was living. I was ecstatic. Maybe we could reconnect and I could talk with him about Jesus. But I wanted to do things right. First, I was determined to renew and deepen our relationship and then I would broach the topic of faith at the perfect moment after trust and credibility had been established. There's a lot at stake, I thought. I want to look for the ideal opportunity so I don't blow things. Leslie and I invited Tim and his wife over to dinner. And over a meal of barbecued chicken, we chatted about the Chicago Bulls, the Chicago Cubs, and the Chicago Bears or as we Chicagoans call them, the Bulls, the Cubs, the Bears. Our other get-togethers, Tim and I watched sports on television. I kept looking for the perfect opportunity to bring up God, but I never felt the setting was quite right. Once we were too engrossed in a game, another time his wife was there and I wanted to talk to him was when he was alone. And then one day he called with the urgent news that he had been transferred to a city on the other side of the country. He had to leave right away. Suddenly, both Tim and time were gone. And in our busyness, we again drifted apart. A while later, I heard that soon after Tim had moved, he became friends with a Christian who rather promptly engaged him in a spiritual discussion and invited him to his church. Unbeknownst to me, Tim was primed for God, and he immediately and enthusiastically received Christ. I was thrilled when I heard the news. At the same time, I wondered whether I ever would have found that elusive ideal moment to have the same kind of conversation with him. In fact, long after he became a Christian, Tim confessed to me that he wondered why I had chosen to remain silent for so long about something as supremely important as the gospel. You know, if we are alert to opportunities and tuned in to the Holy Spirit's promptings, we're going to find some appropriate way to get into a conversation about Jesus. It may not be the ideal circumstance, but if we approach with sensitivity and empathy, chances are that God will take our meager efforts and use them in the life of our friend. Because the truth is, we don't have all the time in the world. And even more important, our friends don't either. Could you be the one? In his article yesterday, Mr. Strobel wrote, the Bible could be called a book of hope. There are 86 references to hope in the Old Testament with another 80 in the New Testament. Hope is a theme that is woven throughout Scripture. And in these days when your future may be uncertain, where your health may be precarious, where a sense of guilt may weigh you down, where the soaring crime rate punctuates life with a question mark and the environment is deteriorating, 
where people are increasingly alienated from each other and where spirituality has become superficial. I think Jesus would tenderly put his arm around your shoulder and say, I can understand your fears and frustrations, your anxieties and longings, but it is very important that you understand this about me. I am the God of hope. I am that hope because I am the God of the second chance. Jesus is uniquely capable of replenishing the hope that the world can sap from us. As the Apostle Paul prayed in Romans 15, 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, could you be the one? Could you be the one to put the arm of Jesus around someone, around someone's shoulder, and let them know Jesus understands their fears, their frustrations, their anxieties, their longings. But it's very important that they understand about him. He is the God of hope the God of the second chance and the third and the fourth and the fifth. So we are in Christmas month. Advent suppers and services yet for the next three Wednesdays. Christmas Eve service, 5.30 p.m. on December 24th. Could you be the one to put the arm around the arm of Jesus, put the arm of Jesus around someone's shoulder to invite them? Oh, come, let us worship him. Oh, come, let us worship him. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your heart and your mind by faith in Christ Jesus unto a life everlasting. Amen. We join our hearts in prayer. O Lord, our God, you declared Israel to be your people and you brought them out of Egypt. You declared their salvation even when they would not listen to your voice since you have also called and gathered us to be your people, open our hearts to listen to you and to gladly give in to your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you sent John the baptizer to prepare the way of the Lord as prophesied by Isaiah, who foretold the Christ. Remember the pastors whom you have called to proclaim your word today. Give them wisdom and courage as they admonish and absolve your people so that your believers might be prepared for Christ's coming again in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you gather your people together in Christ and you make them partake of your grace. Strengthen the faith of those you have gathered into this congregation so that their love may abound more and more with all knowledge and understanding. Lead us to approve what is excellent and to be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayers. Gracious Lord, as you call and gather us into your family, so bless the households of this congregation. Bless husbands and wives, fathers and mothers, as they go about the work of strengthening marriage and raising children. Let their love abound more and more with knowledge and discernment and fill their homes with the righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, St. John the Baptizer, counseled penitent soldiers to go about their military duties according to your word. Remember those who serve in our armed forces, such as Daniel and Stephen and Xavier and Tom. Protect them from harm. Give them wisdom and courage. Grant that they fulfill their duties honorably. Lord, in your mercy, hear your prayer. Almighty God, your forerunner prepared the way for the one who is mightier than all, your son, Jesus, for Christ's sake, we entrust to you those in need of healing, comfort, and rescue. People such as David, Ruth, Billy, Sandra, Aria, Gloria, Joni, Vera, Pastors Kibler, Immy, so many others. Individuals that we know who are in treatment for one illness or another, who are recovering from one injury or another, who are doctoring and just getting along from one day to the next. We entrust them to you for healing and comfort and rescue. Have mercy upon them. Deliver them according to your will and strengthen them in faith so that they might be assured of your love and faithfulness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. We trust in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now, in his own words, we stand to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You can say, oh, that pastor. <laughs> and the pastor would say, well, that just shows money isn't the first thing on my mind. That's right. <laughs> That's great.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, for in goodness you created man. And when he was justly, justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing this hymn of your glory. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also at that supper he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take drink. This cup is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the word of God tells us that as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we are proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes again. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always.
Side of 
Blessed gifts of your Savior Jesus give you hope and strength in the Lord and keep you in his faith into life everlasting. As you are able, would you please stand? Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy endures forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. ourselves in you, so that when the world looks at us, they may see only you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Wednesday evening, supper at six, service at seven.